and welcome back to Promotion Tournament where Giants and Schalke are fighting to join the top 10 teams in Europe. Currently Giants are down 0-1. They've got a tough job ahead of them this series. Side selection is in favor of Schalke in game two. They've picked red side. There's no real surprises nope. there. Give uh, themselves the counter pick option for Smitty J because he just went beast mode in game one. Yes, and that happened last series and in a lot of series yep. in Challenger as well. So Smitty J, we know if you even give him a good matchup, like he'll run away with the game. So give him the counter matchup, and this is the perfect opportunity for Schalke to go 2-0 up. Let's talk about Giants because they're the guys under pressure now. They banned out 380 carries, they banned out two supports, and upset still got Zaya. Still got a comfortable pick. The Alistair looked pretty good as well for Noskaren. So where do you see them going as we enter picks and bans? I don't know that they'll change up too much. I would like to see them change up a lot because they have first pick here. Maybe even leave the Tristana available. Um, we are, however, dropping out of picks and bans for just a moment, as uh, we will get back into that soon enough. We did have a Lucian ban come out first from uh, from Giants, so we're taking that away from the mid lane pool of Cadrill for a second game in a row. All right, we'll see whether or not that sticks. Don't 100% know if it has to stay, because uh, we dropped that after it came in. Uh, just to give you as an update, uh, it was a player ordering error in the lobby, so once we get the players in the correct order, we'll jump back in. Hearing from league officials that Lucian and Callista will be banned and it will be confirmed. So we'll jump back in and get those two off. And then where do we go next? AD carries again, we're starting off. So I would like to see Giants leave Tristana available and maybe ban the Zaya instead. Now, I think that would result in Schalke probably last banning Tristana to make sure it's not a first pickable champion. But there's a lot of options yeah. here at that AD carry role that we know Giants play that Schalke we haven't seen yet. So two things that I'd like to see from Giants is a pivot in their initiation approach. Yes. Uh, something we talked about in game one, not a lot of tools. Something I like to see from Schalke is banning away that Callista, because of course it is one of many Troopax's most played champions and gives a very easy, well, easy go button. And I think you're going to get your wish, Trevor, because Elise banned away from Giants. They're not looking to first pick it. That means they're going to go over towards the likes uh, of a Gragas or a Javan, maybe the Zac. Zac has fallen heavily oh, yeah. in priority for a lot of teams, mainly because of the rise of Poppy, Janna, the disengaged champions that do very well against Zac. But still, Giants can look to go that route. All right, let's see if they do. Uh, Elise Jace banned away here by Giants. Not looking to first pick Elise. Not looking to let it go over Jarvan. Removed from the pool, so Tristana is still up and available. And I want to see whether or not that Sejuani ban rears again. I was going to say rears its ugly head, but that's really not fair to Sejuani. Um, or Bristle. Or Bristle. Um, I mean, Pumba looked better. Um, but, um, yeah, because I like it, it felt really strange. A jungler was locked in, and that showed up. Whether or not it's nerves, whether or not it's something we have yet to see, that's what I want to watch. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure out as this draft goes longer. So the Zaya Rakan option is here for Schalke. They're likely to pick up the Zaya or the Caitlyn as their AD carry anyway. And they know Giants aren't going to take Zaya here, so that's where they prioritize this Galio. The inverse of the last game, where Giants picked Galio in this rotation. This would now give them a lot of protection on a later game carry like a Zaya. We saw Cadrill do very well in a scaling matchup in the last wow. game and actually create a lot of pressure himself on the Corky into the Galio. A different style of play though. Cassio into Galio, one of those matchups we've seen a lot in recent times. And considering there's a number of bands towards bottom lane as well as some of the top lane. What is the last pick here for Giants? I feel like you can go jungle on this rotation. They may even look to flex with the Maokai as well. This would give them the engage. This would give them good presence for Gilius a lot better than just the Cocoon. And now you put Schalke in a predicament where they either prioritize AD carry or they look towards the jungle and try and get that matchup. This is the, the more anticipated yeah. selection here. Get that Zaya Rakan, get the bottom lane working for you. All right, so Duo locked in for Schalke. They can now target either the top lane or the support pool of Giants. I mean, Gilius has played that Maokai twice in the past. Uh, zero kills, zero deaths, 10 assists to his name. And of course, it has the possibility of flexing top and not something we've seen Ruin run. Um, and not something that maybe we're expecting yet. Because, of course, Smitty J could just run a counter matchup into it and be very happy with that. Yes, be very happy with that kind of performance. So if Schalke end up locking an engage jungler that comes through, I wonder whether Giants would 
toy with the idea of the poppy top lane and try and play an unorthodox matchup. We know Ruin even plays it into bad matchups, quote unquote, because he feels so confident with the champion. I think that's an option for them, or you pick something very safe up in the top lane. Maybe even the likes of a Shen, although that's not a particularly great threat, does lose the lane. So maybe you're conceding too much over to Smitty J again. Well, that discussion may be happening on the Shelka camp because Poppy's now banned. So where does Memento go? I mean, Gragas still up and available. One of his most played champions all splits. He'll give you some tools to engage and disengage. The Javan as well. Uh, no, was banned in yep. phase one. Yep. Um, used to seeing it get through. But at this point, Zack taken away, so not having that engaged. Gragas is where my mind yeah. jumps to next. Is that, uh, you know, jungler that can fulfill all roles, disengage as well. And we need a little bit of AP damage to round out Shelka. We're heavy on the Zaya right now, so maybe something like a Rumble Top. We'll find out as they most likely leave that top lane pick for loss. No surprise on Gragas, where do Giants pivot? Now, Giants could go towards the Nah here for top lane if they want it, not the best lane matchup against a potential rumble for Schalke would give them that option, but would also allow Ruin to have impact in the side lane later on as well in team fights. That is one of the standard blind picks that we see. Okay, this is an, an interesting matchup with the Morgana into the Rakan. A lot of people have been quite vocal about how Morgana is difficult to make work because you've got to Black Shield preemptively. It's not exactly like you can wait for something to hit and then Black Shield. Yeah. But right now, Shalke don't have a lot of ways to break the Black Shield. Uh, so that is one area we have to now look at for the rest of the Shalke lineup. Well, Rumble might be that answer um, into the Gnarl. What else does Smitty J want to play? Remember, Shalke picked red side. Smitty J was the primary carry. He was unleashed in game one. And now he gets the option. It's difficult because Gnarl doesn't have any like hard counters. Well, he has quite a few, but they're outside of the meta, right? Uh, Smitty play, J did play, play Yasuo into this matchup, but that would be heavily further into the AD. So it's the Jax scaling matchup, a difficult one to play out in the laning phase, and that means Schalke will be looking to scale top lane. This is almost Schalke doing what Giants did in game one against Giants now. You've almost got a complete flip on the way the teams are playing. So very interesting setup off these compositions. Schalke playing for the later game of the split push threat. Giants, a little bit more team fight focused as you go through that mid game. And what I like about the Giants comp, unlike game one, you have point and click CC from the Maokai. You've got long range dark binding for some of those picks. And of course of Ruin, when he gets that Narbar nice and charged up, can look for those engages. But who is going to deal with Smitty J's jacks if Smitty J manages to get ahead? Two members of okay. Giants. <laughs> right. <laughs> not just one. It's not going to be that kind of game where, where they 1v1 the entire game. Interesting setup as well. We, we talk about how it's similar for Schalke to what Giants had in game one. There are a few distinct differences. Schalke have better ways of starting fights themselves. You have a Gragas, you have a Rakan to go aggressive. You're not only relying on an Elise Cocoon to get a fight started. So Schalke may be able to maintain a level of aggressiveness against Giants despite being a uh, scaling side lane threat. Yeah, gonna have some options to them yep. uh, with some headroom to grow. Uh, if I can summarize that one. Well, let's see what they do. You guys jump onto Twitter. Let us know who you think will be qualifying again for the EU LCS. Hashtag GIA win or hashtag S04 win. That's the number 04. Uh, let's take a look. Giants down 0 1 in the series. Schalke scored first blood. We're loading into game two. And of course, for Schalke, this is definitely where they want to be. Schalke, um, I personally felt responsible for Costa cursing them during the spring split with the Schalke tank uh, joke, only to get egg on my face when they lost um, to Misfits Academy back in the day. But this roster looks arguably better, looks more refined, more capable of requalifying. And I think that's the most interesting thing is the names aren't as big. You don't have those standouts, the Vanders of the world, where everyone's like, wow, okay, Schalke, they have to qualify. Yeah. But this is a team that is performing as a sum of its parts very well, more so than Schalke in spring. And that is the real testament to the way that the organization went back and reflected, redid their roster. And that's why they are such a formidable opponent right now. And yeah, something that um, we were talking about in preparing for the series is how a lot of the challenger teams are getting huge amounts of support 
Apparently, they take dancing classes as well now. Well, Noska and an upset. Um, they have been quite vocal about how upset has been helping Noska and learn the game, and they're very, or well, at least at a competitive level, they've been very together when it comes to this bottom lane at all times. They seem to be on the same page, Trevor. It's just like just like a couple, you know, just just working out that way. We'll see whether or not Mini Trupax and Jack Troll can interrupt it, though, uh, because for Giants. Mini Trupax is the guy that I've definitely seen a lot of love and support for on, on social media and on Reddit. Um, talking about the carry potential that, that this kid has. Um, and now he's got himself arguably one of, if not the best, AD carry on 716 in Tristana. I actually think the best at this point. As good as Callista is in the laning phase, I think she doesn't hold up to the late game like Tristana does. Whereas Tristana, safe laning phase. Uh, you can just draft around that. Wow, Cadrell losing out pretty heavily in the early game. Um, there were nerfs to Cassiopeia on 716 that affected her early game. It actually only amounts to the fact her base mana pool got reduced by one Twin Fang's worth of mana. So Jizuki can still just walk into the lane and just lay down a whole lot of damage on Cadrell. Yeah, and the Corrupting Potion as well, just going to help him stay in lane and keep it going. But it's Galio, it's Galio early game um, with Teleport as well. So we'll see Kedril TPing back into lane and looking to get himself set. Dark Binding connects onto Norskaren. He goes for the entrance. It's a knock-up, and that Black Shield was late from Jack Troll. Trupax ends up losing out on the trade. The difficulty of playing the Morgana, it was yeah. actually Norskaren and Upset that were talking a little bit about how they beat Team RB when they had to swap from Janna to the Morgana and that Kasing just wasn't quite able to keep up with those um, Black Shields in time. You can see the difficulty of the lane. Also, it doesn't do a whole lot of good against the Zaya after the crowd nope. control. The uh, damage just goes right through it. That's something we're going to have to keep an eye on as this game goes later because Morgana has other drawbacks. She's not as good as Janna in team fights when it comes to holding crowd control and denying fights because she's so squishy. She just yeah. dies. On the bright side for Jack Troll, if Jax is jumping onto him or Gragas, both being melee and whatnot, the, the soul shackles becomes a little easier. Um, but that is like the silverest of linings. <laughs> also, something will have gone wrong for Smitty J at that point, because that's a team fighting Jax, and you don't want to do that, so... Oh, I've seen too many Jaxes join team oh, fights yes. to believe that it's automatically going to be split push. Talking about Smitty J, um, look at the jungle. There's some support here, Memento and Gilius. Wow, Gilius with a lot of respect, because Kedril had already left the lane and flashes over the wall. So second game in a row, a Gilius invade does not work out. Yes, the second game in a row, the Memento gets the benefit from it, but the difference between game one and this game is the fact that Gilius, this won't completely destroy his early game. Being pushed back because Maokai is going to have a lot of emphasis later on in the game. Unless Memento can get in and actually disrupt even more, Gilius should be okay. He just needs to wait at that flash timing. Yeah, look at the vision being set up. Memento walks in, gets some wards, does not interrupt the sapling toss. Now Gilius will be spotted out as well. And the, the real actual impact of this is Gilius for the next two or so minutes can't flash into a lane and Twisted Advance. That's one of the threats that Amaokai actually has. And with him coming up to the top lane, this might result in Giants going overly aggressive if he can't flash back out. You've seen that happen a couple of times. All right, there's the engage. Uh, Black Shield comes down, actually doesn't even get used. May have been on cooldown. Dark Binding connects onto Upset. And many Troopax forced to flash. Jack Troll forced to exhaust. Upset to Norskaren, definitely winning out on that trade. Yeah, Jack Troll had already used the Black Shield. It's got such a high cooldown early on, 22 seconds there or thereabouts. So that engage follow-up <laughs> is enough. Gilius was spotted on the top side. Memento is here as well. So neutral fight at this point. Nobody really wants it. Yeah, Ruin and uh, Gilius not pulling the trigger quickly enough on Smitty J. So Smitty pops the Trinket Ward and gives them self-visualization. So Schalke, they start off another game with early advantages from the laning phase. Momentus is going to get <laughs> interrupted with the smash. And now let's see whether or not Troopax and Jack Troll can be punished, knowing they're down summoners. Yeah, that's the, the bottom side difficulty for Giants. Um, a little bit more of an expected trade Cleanse in the middle lane. Out from Jazuki. Petrifying Gaze is available. Momentus only level four. Not sure he wants this fight, looking at the minimap. Norskaren's already started to leave the lane, but returns as Kadril backs away. He's got a small CS advantage, using that TP, 
And I think he went aggro because he knew Memento was nearby. Yeah, exactly that. Um, this game has been a little closer to what we perhaps expected from round one of the promotion tournament, especially top lane, the action that we've seen up there. Both of these teams had their top laners and junglers involved in everything they did pre-15 minutes for that first round of the promotion tournament. So we were kind of expecting this dynamic where everybody just goes top and matches up. The key thing for Giants, though, is a lot of that was Ruin and Gilius actually TPing and appearing in the bottom lane itself. So that's <laughs> the other half of this that we got to watch out for, which is still possible. Level 6 for Ruin is there. If he can build that Meganar, get to the bottom lane, maybe that's the engage that turns this bottom lane in their favor. Yeah, I mean, Ruin never got a chance in Camille in game yeah. one. Let's see this engage on the bottom lane. Black Shield comes out, Noscarin with the plumage assistance of Upset really bullying this lane out, but it's not a, equated into a, a CS advantage. Now, Stress, I, I, I know there's some nuances to that 100% kill participation, <laughs> because just how many kills was it? Uh, not many. Right. It was under one a game. Okay, okay, uh, but, but so... what matters is when it did happen, exactly. the two of them were involved. But game one, it, it didn't happen. No, didn't happen. Zero percent for both of them. But it should have. At least Camille, like, it should have played. That's, Theoretically. That's, that's what we're trying to get to here. And I think the, the real caveat to all of this is the fact that it highlights how few kills both of these teams have in the early game. When you look at it again, we're zero zero, nearly eight minutes in at this point. Neither team has really taken a trade. When it comes to actually kills, they, they both teams actually rely on it coming later on in yeah. the game. Giants like to team fight their way out of situations, and that couldn't happen in the last game because they were behind. Yeah, never got a chance to team fight. Smitty J just didn't let them in. Um, Smitty's down again in CS. Uh, sorry, not down again. He's down this game in CS uh, to Ruins Nar, as is to be expected. Memento's farming up a storm, though, as we have a brief pause. I will. Give you guys updates is just a moment. It is Giants. It looks like the referees are fiddling with the headset, um, though I should just wait for confirmation. For <laughs> what we can see on screen is they're talking to both Ruin and Gilius. So that nice. one we don't need confirmation on. We can see that for ourselves. I think the interesting thing talking about top lane, as you said, Smitty J is down in CS, but that again is an expected position. On Jax, you, you need to scale, you need to play that side yep. lane threat later. Nara is just too strong in the laning phase, yep. so only being nine CS down is actually a fine point to be at. It is, especially when you consider Gilius actually spent a little bit of time there, tried yep. to gank. Memento was there to back up, and it was an audio-related situation with uh, Ruin's it. headset, and they fixed it. So, yep. um, But I should definitely always wait before I talk about those things. It sucks being wrong. Uh, but yeah, I mean, gigantic advantage for Memento, at least numbers-wise. Uh, it, it does not equate to any goal difference at all. It's, it's 100, um, which is nothing at this stage. Always misleading those uh, jungle creeps. Yep, the Krugs, the Raptors, mm -hmm. all give you a nice lot of numbers. Oh, Memento's going to get more Krugs for himself. It's going to be great. He's going to be so far ahead. But bottom lane is where he was actually looking to go here. And look, this, you mentioned that a CS lead hadn't appeared in bottom lane yet. Now, the key thing is Mini Troopax and Jack Troll out of health potions and have been for a couple of minutes now. That's where the trading has been focused onto Jack Troll, so they're getting pushed in. It means Mini Troopax and Jack Troll either have to back away yeah. or concede even more of a CS lead now because Upset and Noscaren have been able to bully their way to nearly a 15 CS lead just over the last two minutes alone. I mean, Memento, this Gragas game, when he shows his face, um, he backed up Smitty J top. He backed up Cajal in the mid lane. He pushed many true backs and Jack Troll away bottom lane. The, the presence and the pressure that he is putting on Giants is simply uh, outclassing Gilius right now. And Gilius, like, I love the guy, and I hope he never stops doing this. But he did say that on the 24th of August, Giants will 3-0 Shelka. Now, I don't need to, uh, don't mean to call the guy out for his tweets, as you can see on your screen. But he's down 0 one straight. Yeah, already against the Premonition. As you said, Gilius, one of these players that loves to uh, put himself out there when it comes to tweeting. And I think that's what a lot of players latch onto when it comes to, or a, little, a lot of the viewers will latch onto a player that has a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a personality. Gilius certainly uh, the Marmite of, yes. of EU Challenger is, junglers. You either love him or you hate him. Fantastic analogy. The Marmite jungler of EU CS. The Marmite jungler is playing Maokai and he has to figure out how to get Giants back into the series because it just it feels like Memento is 
providing more value right now. And even the value he's providing, as you said, he's kind of hovering around lanes, not necessarily going aggressive in. And that's a benefit because Schalke, remember, they're playing a very similar comp to what Giants had in the first game when you look at their side lane threat that is actually getting through this game at an acceptable pace. You've got a bottom lane that will scale well as you've got a mid lane that can defend upset yeah. as well. A lot of things are going in Schalke's way in the second game in a row here, and that's a, that's kind of troubling because we were expecting Giants to fight them a little bit more when it comes to putting up resistance to just this long scaling game. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I want to see what they do. It's still even at 11 minutes, and both teams have got both teams. I think have got good team fighting, um, you know, possibilities. The Gragas, Galio, Zaya Rakan is so frustrating to deal with. And I might get called upon. Norse Garen and use that at longer dash range to jump over to upset. And Zaya Rakan ends up potentially saving Norse Garen's life there. Yeah, that's uh, just that extra escape range, of course, from playing the duo together. It's one of those things that you would see Zaya Rakan enough. It, it's not game breaking no. that they have those additional. But it's so perks rare when you see a, an example like that. Where it could have been the difference. Yes. Exactly. And that's like that maybe 10% extra strength when they're paired together. Yeah. Must be difficult to balance. I mean, so. most, most, <laughs> most stats are made up on the spot. 72% of them are here. So the 10% extra strength, that sounds yeah. viable to me. I it mean, does. I think closer to 7.5 personally. But it depends on how you measure your metric stress. Very true. Um, I'm going to have to ask the stats team. <laughs> to let me know what the latest First Blood was in EU CS Summer. Uh, this game could challenge it. I've got that feeling in my bones. Not exactly the most exciting of stats, but no. let's see whether or not Memento uh, tells me to stuff it because uh, he's got the barrel, got the ability to jump in and comboed with upset and no scare and CC. After That's that, definitely uh, a dead at someone. Seems like Memento <laughs> is a bit stuffed at this point. Maybe a little bit too much on his Gragas at this point. So, okay, here come Upset and Norskarin out of the lane, trying to transition in to get jungle vision control. Couple of wards go down, just trying to see any roam that'll come from Jazuki. Because look, Kegel can beat the roam, or at least match it from Jazuki very easily using the ultimate. Jazuki has to now cross a bunch of wards if he wants to get out of the lane, and he's already getting pushed in, so that option doesn't really exist for him anymore. Yeah, what is the uh, the win conditions for the Giants? You know, you've talked about Jazuki a little bit there. We know, obviously, many troop acts can scale with Tristan and have some frontline powers, but where else do Giants look to win this game? So they got a, a good amount of team fighting and skirmishing. When you look at the Nah, you can bring him into the team fight. Uh, you've got Cass Cassio, who will scale very well with the Tristana as well. So both of these teams haven't put many eggs in the early game basket at all. Giants will be looking to get the later game fights. So will Schalke. Schalke's are a little bit more flimsy in the sense that Cadrill, his role is just protecting upset and letting yeah. Smitty J push the side lane. Also, the flexibility of jumping to Smitty J if something happens. Yep. Hugely valuable. First dragon of the game being started here at 1340. I'm looking at the mini map. Giants not really in a great place to contest. It feels like there's going to be a little fight here. Memento's running low. Gilius coming in from the side. Can throw down that ultimate to cut off the river. Stress everybody's joining, but it's a little bit of a messy setup. Dark binding is dodged by the body slam. And Schalke gift wrapped the Ocean Drake. Use the blast going over the wall. That's the flash engage onto it too. Nature's Cross not yet triggered. It has been thrown down, but that's the dragon. It was picked up by Giants. Now Schalke engaging. Cadrill is joining Ooh. the fight. Look at that. The teleport starting to finish. Gilius gets jumped on by the leap empowered strike. And Schalke got two kills for the cost of the dragon. Yeah, Schalke able to re engaged the fight very well. Memento came in, hit a double body slam that came through. Ruin actually cancelled his TP, so that'll give Giants the tower first blood for this game. Memento has to be careful here. He's just going to die to many troop packs. He is indeed flash for many troop packs. I think if he'd had vision and no scare, and he may have even gone further forward. One kill reply to Giants. And Giants at this point may even be happy. The fact they get tower first blood or should do, no, they actually won't because Schalke are going to defend topside and push the bottom lane at the same time. That tower did not fall. Well, before the previous game, Schalke had a 90% win rate when picking up tower first blood. It will be going up because they won the previous game off the tower first blood. Let's see if they can do it again. 
Schalke with a small advantage in stress. This is uh, how they did it. Yeah, this is the fight over Dragon that started everything off. So Jazuki and Gilius know they need the help from their bottom lane, and Mini Trupax actually is able to block Upset's way into the fight. Schalke wait a little bit longer, wait, get the Blast Cone off. A little late to take the Dragon, but out came the Body Slam from Memento to re-engage this fight. Kadrol's the one that starts landing the Torn, gets in there, good Body Slam oh, to so follow good. up. And the fact that Jax gets this kill is so significant because Smitty J needs this to get into the game. Jax must get to two items to have true impact on the game. And the fact that Smitty J has one kill now just lets him get there that bit faster. Upset was completely untouched the entirety of that fight. Schalke just played that one out beautifully. So 16 minutes in, uh, I did get the update from the stats team. The latest first blood in EU Challenger was 1753 and it was Schalke taking on War. Uh, that was not beaten this game because it was around 1430. Yeah, way, way later. Yeah, way. yeah it has to be significantly longer, guys, if you want to break your own record. But Schalke did get first tower again. They got first blood again. And uh, it feels like more of the same. Slightly slower laning phase. Schalke getting these marginal improvements, these marginal victories. But I don't think it'll be as easy to snowball from here because of the team five power, because of the tools that Giants have. Exactly, we're into an even game state now with that tower dying up on the top side. Giants, because of some of the CS leads that they had, and they're only minor, but yeah. up in the top lane is uh, probably the, the largest one. That has allowed this gold lead to be even between the two. And honestly, for Giants, that's okay, but they need to get further ahead because key items are starting to be completed for Schalke. You've got the Adaptive Helm on Cadral up against the Cassiopeia. You've got yourself a Trinity Force on the Jax for that side lane. Like, these are big items you cannot overlook, and that is what Schalke are relying on. They need one more item, basically, on this Jax before Giants have to start committing two people to the side lane. You've talked about the Jax quite a few times, mm -hmm. um, not only because the champion itself can take over the map, but Smitty J. Um, Coming from that Jace performance in game one, he just hard carried. Uh, 203 plus 28 CS at 15 minutes is ridiculous. And 517 damage per minute. Now, again, it's Jace, it's Poke. He's not going to have as amazing stats this time. But it's the carry potential we're trying to highlight. Yeah, and he actually ended the game with like plus 90 CS on uh, Ruin. So now we get to see some more of the map being opened up in favor of Giants. They're going to use the Rift Herald to push the bottom lane through. And this is going to make it tougher for Smitty J. He now doesn't have a tower standing behind him in the bottom lane. Can't really defend out there when he goes there. But look, the threat from Schalke is now looking towards the top side. That's where Smitty J is actually pushing. Yeah. And the defensive play on the bottom side should be enough to hold this second tower. Well, let's see how much damage they can get down. In a turret chunk, fairly low. Noskaren goes in, dashes out, takes Gilius with him. Gilius takes a lot of damage. The hero's entrance was used, and Gilius gets caught out by Noskaren pulling him back. Awkward trade as Schalke really capitalized on Gilius' aggressive play there, trying to at least defend the rest of his team. Gilius was just trying to get some crowd control down, ends up getting dragged all the way past the tower. And then Cadrol was on his way already. So Binding didn't land because Upset used the ultimate, good ultimate to dodge out. Gilius was trying to avoid oh. the knockup by the looks of it, and then didn't realize that Norskirin was going backwards, charmed under the tower, taunted under the tower. Gilius ends up falling, and the rest of his team are running for the hills. Oh, Gilius giveth and Gilius taketh, but only ever one at a time. He's definitely one of those players that can win you games single-handedly, but sometimes just does not show up. Now, with their backs against the wall, Schalke with a comp that can do very well in the late game. Their Jax was not really hindered or hurt at all. Um, going to be feeling very comfortable as we approach this mid-game. Yeah, now Memento has another key job here. We've seen him be some sense of engage, at least around that dragon fight. Memento for Schalke now plays the important role of disengaging any bad fights and starting any fights where they have a numbers advantage. Because, for instance, say Jazuki is off in a side lane, doesn't have TP, Kadrol can match it yeah. very easily. If Memento can start a fight at that kind of game state, then Schalke will very happily look towards a Baron off a, a one fight. We've seen what they can do. They're very, very quick to turn to that Baron when they just see even Gilius low. That's what happened in game one. Gilius wasn't even dead and they turned to Baron. Yes, they managed to make it work. Gilius was just chunked out. And You talked a lot about the, the, the Baron plays. Um, Shelka 
Do they just pressure the map, unlock Baron, and then pressure the map to win? Do you believe in their macro ability to play the 1 4 and around Baron and around the side lanes? I do, because we saw it last week uh, against Mysterious Monkeys, the other team that likes to 1 4 and try and use their top lane as a split pusher. They actually did it very effectively in a, a handful of the games. I believe they can do it again, and I feel like Giants haven't really responded to a lot of what Schalke have been doing in this series. In game one, we saw an awkward swap from Giants up towards the top lane to get out of uh, what they thought was a bad laning situation. I haven't seen a whole lot in this game either, because look, this is the state we're talking about, where Cassiopeia is on the side lane, and Schalke now have an option. Maybe it's mid lane, maybe it's even on the bottom lane here. Yeah. Maybe they even just go for the Cassie Pier on the top side and try and kill Jazuki. But these are the kinds of things that Giants can actually get exploited doing. All right, let's see where Shalka decide to invest their resources. Uh, in the topic of resources, two item spikes now starting to filter through. Um, Jazuki's Morella Nomicon and Rod of Ages actually not doing a lot to Kadril. See himself that Frozen Hearts and a lot of MR to stack. Rapid Fire Cannon just picked up for Upset. Um, Ruins got himself the traditional Gnar split push build, uh, Frozen Mallet and Black Cleaver. Went Frozen Mallet first, try to bully out that lane even more, but it, it's not showing in leads yet. No, and a lot of that is the fact that Smitty J, look at where he is on the map now. He knows he's still waiting for more time, knows he can't push out blindly, yeah. so doesn't yet. Uh, Mini True Pack's actually nearly getting caught there, but you see the Black Shield was active at the end of it. There's a, a stylistic mismatch in mid laners that I think is very interesting in this match. Jizuki has typically succeeded when he can play his counter matchups. His likes of the Echo into the Syndra. These matchups that go in his favor in the laning phase. Now, Jizuki is trying to play scaling games against Kadrel. Yeah. And that's where Kadrel's strength is. You're trying to beat him at his own game. Well, if you can beat him at his own game, maybe that's how you win the series. Um, let's take a look. A little bit of setup. Around the Baron, Gilius decides to go into the pit. Dark Binding connects, and Sapling will trigger Baron. Enough mobility on the side of Shelka that they're able to jump out of the pit. I want to look at the gold graph for Shelka, for how they managed to pick up game number one, because it is very traditional, very Shelka-esque, where even for a while, and then they just unlock the ability to win. Oh, they just get that Baron, push it through, and know how to snowball the game effectively. That's what we saw in game one. And that is what they've threatened to do a couple of times around the Baron at this point. That's what they were trying to set up. Vision control around Baron, maybe even looking for a pick on Jazuki. We talked about on the side lane. That was a possibility, but Giants have been better this game at actually denying some of the pathways for Schalke. You can see now Giants want to set up that mid lane threat because Schalke are spread across the map, but they're starting to collapse. Look, Cadrill coming down from the top lane. All right, Bramble Smash comes down from Gilius. The entrance is available for Cadrill. He uses the Justice Punch to escape. While all this is going on, Smitty J is shoving the bottom lane. Look, Cadrill's not taking a lot of damage. Turns it back around with the Winds of War. That Adaptive Helm doing work with the Twin Fangs. Now Gilius a little unsupported by Giants. Giants grouped up, tried to siege the tower, and while they got a lot of good damage onto it, were unable to secure the objective right now. Smitty J had to back away at the same time, so a lot of that presence in the bottom lane is released. Uh, the vision control is non-existent bottom side for Schalke. They haven't had anybody invest any vision down bottom side, so Smitty J knows he has to play this safely, has to play it very calmly. You can see, Zero. Yep. Literally zero at any point in either bottom jungle in favor of Schalke. So that's why Smitty J backs away. It ends up giving the tower over to Giants because of the fact that Mini True Pack's just on Tristana 25 minutes in the game, just presses E on the tower, four autos, and it's dead. So Giants at this point actually taking a lot from this exchange will get a second tower as well. So just edging out a thousand gold lead. Yeah, Smitty J just edged out to Blade of the Rune King. He was sitting on about a thousand gold. Finished that one out, and this is a good sign for Giants if you're looking for them to even the series. They've got good protection for Tristana, who's got the Infinity Edge static shiv, I think. Uh, Two thousand gold for many true packs. So likely going to finish off the Rapid Fire Cannon. Void Stuff also, by the way, just completed for Jazuki. So power spikes are plenty for Giants. Yep. Uh, Mountain Drake in a minute and a half. Uh, Baron is up and available, so there's options. And you, you saw Giants sieging, grouping, trying to make those proactive plays. 
I'm expecting to see more of it. I'm expecting to see more. I'm also expecting to see a couple of attempts out of Shalka now. Smitty J will start testing the waters now that he's part two, past two items. He might not take an all-in trade at first, but here is Kadrill as well. This is what they've been looking to set up here. Smitty J recognizes he has enough damage to take a trade, especially with the damage reduction, but mid lane. All right, Featherstorm's already been used by Upset. A good quickness from Noskaren. Dark Ooh, Binding upset. connects onto Upset. Buster Shot sends him packing. Mini Troopax with the red buff. Manages to rocket jump forward. Not done yet. Giant support staff ecstatic at the double kill for Mini Troopax. They're going to turn right away and head towards the Baron. Smitty J, the second trade is not going in his favor now as Ruin has been able to put a lot of damage down. This is what I was saying about testing the water. Smitty J still not confident out on this side lane. And now Giants looking to try and get the Baron for themselves. They have the teleport on Ruin if they need to bring him across. Mini True Packs, look, this is still 3,000 health. They don't feel confident without killing one of these members first. If they get Memento, it's secured. Yeah, Memento's going so low. Twin Fang takes him down. Smitty Jay's jumped into the fight. Petrifying gay stuns too. Smitty Jay's looking for Jazuki, but the Baron is picked up by Giants. Now all of a sudden Ruin turns his attention to Kadrill. Won't be able to catch him or run him down. Crunches forward and the wallop, but there's no follow-up. And Giants off the back of a Gilius engage. Get the Baron. A real big passage of play for Giants there. And you have to think that perhaps it was Cadrill's ult being used in the bottom lane, signifying that Schalke were committing to the bottom lane. That actually meant Giants could go. They knew the damage reduction wasn't there. Upset couldn't clear enough distance, even after the Feather Storm and the Flash, to actually deny this engage. You see, Upset standing on a ward. It's a very common ward placement. Not a lot more Upset could do from this. He tries to get out, tries to put damage down, and then Mini Troopak says, okay, hang on. I can actually just get free damage down from that root being in place. No way for Upset to get further out of the fight. Double kill comes through for Mini Troopak, and fast forward all the way through the rest of this one. And Giants so on the Baron. Memento Cadrill try and come up to stop it from happening, but out comes the TP. Smitty J TP's in himself, but remember, we don't want to see a team fighting Jax. That's not his position to play from, and it means the Giants able to just easily get through the rest of this fight. You mentioned the Petrifying Gaze, catch both of them. Schalke not really able to contend with the second half of this fight. Giants come away with the kill lead, the dragon lead, the tower lead, the gold lead. Every single way they could be leading, they are. The quickness comes in for Norskaren, but the Petrifying Gaze locks up three. Jazuki is taken down after his ultimate is fired, and Shalka will get a momentary respite from the Baron-empowered Siege. A key engage there for Shalka on the, the push from this Baron buff. Jazuki didn't have his flash from the earlier fight, tried to cleanse his way out of the fight, but couldn't quite clear enough and upset, got the damage down. Oh. Giants are gonna reset back onto this tower again, but it's four versus five. They can't really afford to do this, even though a lot of the ultimates were used by Schalke. And look at the minimap. Minions pushing the bottom lane, the top lane, the mid lane for Giants. They have absolute map control as we're getting closer to this 30 minute mark. And Mini Troopax outranges nearly everything on the Shalka squad. So he's just sitting back and hammering away with the Bandal Gunner. This is why Tristana yes. is the best AD carry, in my opinion, on 716. Safety, damage, scaling. Yeah. Great things to have. Now Ruin has to try and run away from Smitty J. But look at the cost. Three members of Shalka show top. Giants with zero hesitation turn their attention mid and bottom. Baron is still up for 45 seconds, and the pings are on the inhibitor turret. Giants looking to break open the base. They are aware, though, that Jizuki is only in the middle lane. Schalke don't know how, just how close until Cassio starts showing, but Giants know they have to play this out very carefully. Smitty J even losing that exchange in the top lane, thanks to a lot of the minions and the damage that came through Ruin's abilities connecting. All right, no teleports for either top laner, but the inhibitor turret is dropped. Super Minion still not secured as a second inhibitor turret falls. Many True Packs Jack Troll are protected by Gilius. Or how or are they? Flash is available for Norskaren, but the Dark Binding prevents any further follow-up. Battle Dance over to Upset. But look at this, Giants flawlessly, flawlessly take down two inhibs. This is really similar 
to some of the games from the NIP series where Giants are just walking it in with the Baron buff. Very similar to the last game from Schalke as well. We looked at the gold graph and how they snowballed effectively. Giants are doing the same now in game two of this series. Schalke want to go. They do indeed. The knockup catches onto Gilius. Upset takes a lot of damage. No score and battle dances backwards. Smitty J Ooh, gets the first of the fight. Mini Trubax is escaping with his life, but that cannot be said for Gilius and Jazuki. Super minions in two lanes as Norskaren realizes he's not going to win this fight. Upset with no flash available, looking to run down Mini Trupax, but that just will not matter. How well can Schalke defend two waves of super minions and what will be an additional siege from Giants in the coming minutes. Right as we were talking about clean play for Giants, the Baron actually expires and they make a push onto the mid lane tower. Schalke recognize that this is the time for them to go aggressive. Again, another fight where Jazuki ends up getting picked off early on thanks to Schalke just spotting him, getting on top of him while he's still not got that flash. No cleanse, couldn't survive any longer. And that means Schalke delay Giants onslaught for a few more minutes. Yeah, huge kudos to Mamiya. That barrel catching mini troop packs. You can see the damage dealt by upset throughout the course of the fight. And that means Schalke are now 5,000 gold down. They've got three towers standing between their nexus and defeat and an even series. Let's see whether or not they can defend. I mean, if it were a Siva, you would say they farm to 60 minutes and six items and win. That's what was proven in LCS quarterfinals. It happened on both sides of the pond. But there's no Siva, so that whole story is a waste of time. <laughs> and we'll see whether or not they can do the same thing with upset on Zaya. Yeah, Zaya not quite as uh, strong when it comes to that ricochet that Siva has, but still a very good late game scaling carry. You've now got the Essence Reaver, Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire Cannon looking for a fourth item here. So it's not like it's impossible for upset, but I would like to see a little bit more damage itemized against these tanks. You've got a Maokai, you've got yep. a Gnar that in Meganar is difficult to jump through, but. Yep. Honestly, they found Jazuki in back-to-back -back fights, and without a second carry, Mini Trupax can get caught by Memento's barrel if that's still available. We saw that in the last fight. So Schalke have actually found the mark on a lot of the really important targets this game. It's so difficult for Smitty J. He's now going to get locked into these 5v5s. The quickness engage comes in. Jack Troll, the barrel does not send him back to the team. Explosive shot and buster shot won't be enough to take him down. Keep your eyes on upset. He's Ruin. been by Ruin. Nod into the wall. Jazuki takes him down. Twin Fangs for a double. Looking for the triple. Not going to be able to pick it up because Mini Trupax drives it home. Super Minions onto the Nexus turrets and Giants Gaming bounce back in game number two, turn their attention over to the Nexus, and Giants even out the series at one to one. So far, it's been a series of whoever has the more carries carries harder <laughs> for this one. So we're going to a game three out of this best of five. I want to see whether both teams actually stick to this game plan because we've seen now both Giants and Schalke being able to play around their top lane carry quite well. Mid lane has done a decent job in a scaling matchup as well. And that game, Giants were able to have that passage of play just off one attempted play bottom side out of Schalke. They take the engage. Gilius sets it up with the Maokai. They're able to get a couple of kills and the Baron buff. That was what blew the game open. So much respect uh, at the potential engage. Look at the support staff, by the way. This is something we were talking about beforehand. The entire giant squad, similar story for Shelka, but both teams playing respectful, uh, tempered, controlled League of Legends. And the moment an opportunity presented itself, that was where Gilius went in. It, it was off the back of some criticism, some question marks which Gilius was showing up today. And then he's like, well, the guy that can find two kills and win the game for Giants. All <laughs> uh, right, Giants, they did show the strength. They won game two. Uh, Analyst Desk, what do you guys think about the performance? You did uh, great, Trevor. I really want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Martin. I was going to say, my favorite line from the cast was, uh, Gilius giveth and Gilius taketh away, but never both Very at true. the same time. Very true. Now, of course, we want to take a look at the picks and bans because we were incredibly critical of Giants after the previous game, but they did adapt almost completely different strategy coming into this game. This was much more of a Giants draft, in my opinion, especially to what they like to play around. Like, they have double carries for team fights in Jizuke here on Cassiopeia, and, of course, their Tristana as well as the main damage dealer, as we got mm -hmm. to see in this game as well a yes. few times. When you have a really good AD carry, <laughs> that is a great champion for you. But what I also really like about it is the fact that Gilius is on champion where 
he can just engage team fights. Now, he's still trying to make stuff happen early on, which he doesn't have to, and it actually did cost him quite a bit, but the fact he can be much more impactful in fights helps the rest of Giants, because this game, in my opinion, is going to be won through five on five team fighting. Who has the stronger five on five team fight will win most of the games. Well, let's take a look at one of those early fights that did end up going in the favor of Shao because it may have made us skeptical of what Giants were trying to bring to the table, but just a beautiful use of Galio in this fight, I think we have to say. Yeah, so Galio, we're very up and down right now in terms of uh, if we like Galio or not in this series. This is why we like him. Uh, in these like mid game fights after this engage happens, comes in with of course, ulti after the engage has already happened from Noskaren, but then, like, it's, he's just unkillable. Like, it's not the Galio who's the main reason they win the fight here, but when he finally enters, his base damage is high enough to actually kill people, and he's just impossible to take down. You just spend all your cooldown on trying to kill the Rakan or the Zaya, you're not going to have enough now to kill this Galio. And we saw that upset was enough damage combined with the Galio bases, that when you had a three-man taunt, you have a three-man yes, body so slam from Gragas, that, that it was good to keep going, but I feel like Shalka couldn't maintain that momentum, right? Couldn't keep utilizing Galio in that same way. They couldn't force scenarios where the, that Galio team fight was really good, and that's really what started to cost them. Yeah, this is why I don't like the Galio in this series specifically, is I think if you are really good at playing around him in the early game where you set up his ultis to go to side lanes and like create tower dives or set up you know, good situations for your split pusher where you can get a 2v1 situation, which we did see a few times. If you can really execute that every time, I think the Galio mid will have a lot of value for both teams. However, we have now seen two games in a row where they get one or two good ones and then they get three or four, or two or three that doesn't really matter and then he gets the full late game and you have one carry in team fights because Schalke wants to run a split pusher every time. Mm -hmm. That's too much pressure on an upset compared to Giants and, with Tristana and Cassidy. Yeah, and you're giving him, you know, Zaya. And Zaya's fantastic. She can't save herself. But she can save herself once, right? And right. Tristana is just this constant threat of damage. And we saw in our second replay kind of what would happen when uh, Shalka fumbles that engage or Shalka can't find those opportunities. Or in this case, when upset does get picked off. Yeah, I think uh, Moscarin had a lot of cool engages on Rakan. But right here, you are going for the Morgana with the Tristana standing next to the Morgana. That is not going to work for you. Uh, that is never going to work for you. So Mini Trupax here, he just goes completely off. Gets two kills for his team, they go Baron, and this is what I like to see. Bottom LCS team still struggle when it comes to executing Baron, but this is such a nice setup from Giants. After they pick up the kills, they realize you don't need to risk a 50-50 here. TP comes in, Jizuke moves around the corner, smacks Memento down into the ground, and then he lands a sick ulti right after as well on Smitty J and on the Galio. And suddenly, you actually have a really clean execution from Giants in a high-pressure situation despite being 5v3 when the whole Baron setup starts. And that is the kind of stuff we like seeing from teams who are about to qualify for the LCS. Yeah, the confidence and the coordination, I think we also have to praise them because we see so many teams who attempt to take Barons, and as you mentioned, a lot of lower lower tier teams in the oh. LCS, like, not have the level, of yeah, not have the level of communication to say, hey, stop hitting this. We're going to go kill these guys first. And, and that coordination from Giants, yes, it sounds like a little thing, but the coordination for everyone to go and the discipline to say, stop it. We're not going to try to smite it. We're going to kill Out, these guys first. Kill. Then we'll go. That level of coordination, I think Schalke has to be feeling a little bit nervous because if they do pick another comp that needs to win by a certain point or needs to get value out of a pick like Galio, mm. uh, it seems like Sha or Giants rather have proven themselves a team that can punish it. Of course. Again, as we talked about here, it was a really strong 5-on-5 five -five team fight comp from Giants. This is kind of like one of my favorite kind of conversations right now where you have like a top laner in NAR who can split push, but is also really good in fight. So you get both <laughs> options with that pick. And then you have the rest of the team kind of just set up to protect two big carries who scale into the late game. We see G2 run these kind of comps. We see a lot of teams in the meta do this, and it's very, very successful. So I think the adaptation for Schalke needs to be, okay, if we're going to run split pushes every time, we need a strong enough four-man group that we can still win late game fights without relying on Smitty J because he's not going to win the game for you in the side lane. Or at least force a pick so you can get a four on four, right? Or a five four. on four with the side. But you can't just keep running into five on fives with a team that's not built for five on fives expecting... To win the late game, yeah. Exactly. And we saw, of course, a, a final fight coming in here. Uh, and at this point, the game is pretty much decided, but we do have to praise some individual members on Giants for, for making this final dive happen and closing this out when they did have a good advantage. Yeah, Black Shield on your Tristana. Step forward to hit the tower, engage is on, and right now when you've already kind of failed to catch the AD carry, who's still sitting at 100% HP and just shooting away at everything in the late game, you're not going to win this fight. And uh, this obviously is, is a bit of a problem for Schalke, and the reason we just showed the last fight was, once again, just to highlight 
how Schalke here, also how Giants want to play these fights. Very, very simple. Big front line, fatty tanks in the front, massive damage dealers in the back. Put a black shield on your AD carry, <laughs> and then tell that guy, shoot, 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 <laughs> shoot, and, shoot. And the flash for Suzuki, he sees the single damage threat at this point, which is upset because if Jax jumps into that many people, he's dead. He doesn't do anything, That's right? That's it. And the second you land the stun on upset, the game feels like it's over. Now, moving into game three, just to round this out, Schalke, do you think that they just that teams just need to stop going for these compositions that have these limited time windows, like with a pick like Galio or a pick like Elise, and we just need to see mm -hmm. more just team fighting on both sides? Or do you really think that Schalke can be successful continuously drafting these split pushers for Smitty J? I think the split pushers are fine. I think if you take this draft and let's say you put an Oriana in the mid lane instead of the Galio, I think there's a better chance in the late game fights they can actually go even against Giants. It is still a little bit difficult because it is a, a Jax compared to a, a Meganar, but at least I think it gives them a better chance. So that's kind of the thing for me is if you want to play Galio in this series, we need to see these ultis used to full effect every single time in the early to mid game. If that fails and you end up in fights against a Cassiopeia and a Tristana, you will most likely lack damage, especially on the side of Giants. Oh, sorry, on the side of Schalke, because they run these split pushers, and then you're not going to win the late game fights. And we we know this is going to come down to late game fights because we have seen two games in a row now where <sighs> the better team fighting team. But I love it. it. I love that it comes down to team fighting. Of course, there's a lot on the line for Giants and Schalke in this series. We'll find out which team takes the lead when we return. Thanks, honey. Let's focus, guys. Yes. Yeah, focus. That's the dragon. It was picked up by Giants. Now Schalke engaging. Cajal is joining the fight. Look at that. The teleport starting to finish. Gilius gets jumped on by the leap empowered strike from Noskeren. Dog Ooh, finds upset. it. Connects onto upset. Buster shot sends him backing. Many true bucks with the red buff. Burning just a rocket jump forward. Not that too far. Twin Fang takes him down. Smitty Chase jumped into the fight. Petrifying gaze stuns too. Smitty Chase looking for Chizuki, but the Baron is picked up by Giants. Eddie, we need to kill Eddie. No flash more. Eddie, 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 Eddie. Okay, kill her, kill her, kill her. I'm playing, I'm playing. Can I finish it? Yeah. Okay, nice. Going into the wall, Jizuki takes him down. Twin Fangs for a double. Look at Giants gaming. Bounce back in game number two. Turn their attention over to the Nexus. And Giants even out the series at one to one.